Boomers versus Gen Z in the workplace. The struggle is real, and especially now that we're seeing the largest age gap between employees at work, with the oldest boomers being in their late 70s and their young counterparts between the ages of 17 and 27. While we already know that both generations grew up in wildly different times, even just the past few years have seen significant and unprecedented changes in the reality of both career and life. This Newsweek article from last week reports that Generation Z is among the least productive at work. But get this, the key factor in determining how much an employee got done was directly tied to the age of the people they were working with. Those who had managers who were 12 plus years older than them were one and a half times more likely to report low productivity. When I got to share my perspective on this piece, it was an easy yes. That's because I'm a career coach who works with both generations. I'm also smack dab in the middle of them. Yep, I'm an elder millennial or Zen as they say. And I've also been speaking on the topic of Gen Z since way back in 2017, when people were still arguing about what to call them. That's me at the LEAD conference, the largest marketing conference in Asia, speaking on this very topic. All of this to say, I've got lots of thoughts on this very important and very hot topic. Who's right? Who's wrong? Is Gen Z really lazy and entitled? Are boomers overworked, over demanding, and out of touch? Let's dive in. But first, hello and welcome. If you're new to me, I'm Kristen Zavo, a certified career coach helping high achievers to land and thrive in their dream roles. Before launching my coaching practice, I spent 15 plus years in traditional corporate roles, including time in banking, consulting, finance, marketing, and strategy. I'm also the best selling author of Job Joy, Your Guide to Success meaning and happiness in your career. And my work has been quoted in the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Fortune Magazine, Business Insider, and more, most recently in the aforementioned article for Newsweek. Subscribe for job search and career advice and stay till the end because what I have to share might just change your view on the other generation. Now, before we get into too much detail, I want to hear from you watching this. What generation are you a part of? Tell me in the comments, Boomer, Gen X, Millennial, or Gen Z? Side note, this video is about general trends, ideologies, and reputations of various age groups. I am, of course, not saying that every person in every generation believes or thinks this way. Back to the piece recently published in Newsweek titled, Gen Z is struggling to work with boomers, which I'd argue goes both ways. When asked why I thought professionals in their low to mid 20s might not be as productive as their older counterparts, here's what I had to say. Baby boomers grew up with more security, loyalty, and pride in what they do for work, making it a key part of their identity. For Gen Z and millennials, this is rarely the case. Gen Z does not have the luxury of job security. Pensions are a thing of the past, and they've seen in recent years how one can sacrifice their well-being for a job only to be laid off without reason. Gen Z also grew up being aware of the online gig economy and views work as just one part of a full life and essentially just a way to make money. This trans Relates to this generation not feeling the need to produce beyond their job description or work hours. But how did we get here? Boomers and Gen Z have wildly different upbringings, values, and attitudes about work that fall into five specific categories. I'm really curious to hear which one resonates with you most. Number one is mutual loyalty between employee and employer. Boomers were really the first generation to glamorize climbing the corporate ladder. Many grew up in times of economic struggle, and so work ethic was deeply ingrained in them from the beginning. Living to work became a popular attitude, one that professionals took pride in, and that we still see remnants of in today's high-stress, male-dominated professions like banking, finance, and consulting. This was so much the case that one's job, one's career, became a huge part of their identity. Working hard and being dedicated to the job, even at the expense of personal life, didn't just mean a bigger paycheck. It equated to higher feelings of worthiness, of confidence, and of safety. One main difference between then and now is that boomers were rewarded for their loyalty and hard work through stability, 
pensions, and opportunities for growth, which in a large part is not at all the experience of those newer to the workforce. Gone are the days of guaranteed stability, a defined career path, consistent raises and promotions, and so on. And with the exception of a few industries, most young professionals cannot count on their loyalty being rewarded through pensions and retirement support. So is it really that surprising that according to a 2022 Gallup poll, over 50% of Gen Z employees are ambivalent or not engaged at work? By the way, if this is you, after you watch this video, be sure to check out my recent training on the essentials to happiness at work. Without these five things in place, it will be hard to find fulfillment no matter how great the job. I'll link below. Lack of mutual loyalty between employee and employer is just one piece of this. The second categorical difference between boomers and Gen Z at the office is the way each group prefers to work together, specifically when it comes to hierarchy. Boomers generally feel more at home in traditional hierarchical environments. They pay their dues, they respect and defer to the wisdom of those who are older and more experienced, and they value clear-cut if not rigid, structure and rules of engagement. You don't need a psychology degree to know that Gen Z rebels against this way of doing work. I'd argue that these differing perspectives actually date back to before work was even in the picture, specifically how we grew up as children. Even as an elder millennial, I see a huge difference in how I was raised versus how my parents were raised. Boomers were born in the 50s and 60s, and they grew up in a time when even at home, children knew their place, right? We've all heard that phrase that a child should be seen and not heard. There were more definite boundaries, certain topics that were off limits with parents. It could even come across as disrespectful or prying for a child to ask questions about money or even personal things about their parents. Meaning the boomer generation grew up with, and even if they hated it, came to respect or at least accept a certain level of hierarchy at home, in school, and ultimately in the office. That's simply not the case for younger generations, and to the largest extent, Generation Z. The pendulum swung in the opposite direction when boomers themselves decided to parent differently, losing so much of that at-home hierarchy. For example, during this time, it became normal for mothers and daughters, fathers and sons to be best friends and have zero limits on conversations and topics. Children were asked their opinion on major purchases for the home, and and as technology grew, parents began to go to their kids for advice. Even now, it's become a bit of a joke that adult children feel like tech support when they visit their parents for the holidays. All of this to say, for Generation Z, home life was more flat. And so this expectation or way of being translated to school and was also expected at work. When you consider their very different upbringings, it's no wonder that boomers and Gen Z clash in the office. But it's not just the difference in how each generation grew up. The third major distinction between the two groups is how technology has impacted the way we do our jobs. Boomers still grew up in a time where you could learn and master your craft. Say you go to school for finance or marketing, you get a good job, you find a mentor, you hone your skills, and then you rinse and repeat not unlike apprenticeships of times past. Think back to the 80s when many boomers were starting or a bit into their careers and compare that to present day. Times and technology move so much more slowly. For the most part, but for a few exceptions, you could get your formal education and basically be done learning. In contrast, in order to be successful in today's work world, you've got to adopt an attitude and a discipline of continuous learning in order to just stay at pace with your peers, never mind get ahead. Even the exact same title for a job today can look radically different than the same one five years ago. We're staying on top of our craft versus mastering something that stays static, which means that now more than ever, it's not just young professionals who need guidance from the older, wiser generation, but boomers also need to seek advice and perspective from younger workers, again, messing with that old hierarchy that we discussed before, which leads me to major difference number four. This fast pace and ever growing technology not only means that we have to work harder to stay on top of our game in our current roles, but it also equates to a seemingly endless array of new job options to choose from. Boomers didn't 
have this luxury, making one job at one organization that promised to take care of you even more appealing. When I went to school, executive coaching wasn't really a thing and certainly not in the online learning space the way it is today. And the industry has changed drastically even since I've been working in this field. It's not just in coaching though. New jobs that we couldn't have even conceived of even just a year ago are popping up every day. Influencers and AI coders are just a couple examples. Side note, if you're thinking of making a switch, watch my four-step career change formula training next. It's not just that more jobs are available, but more options in the way we work. No longer are we tied to one organization and a nine to five role. Gig economy is real and alive with 55% of young American professionals having an additional job on the side with some even cobbling together a few side hustles in place of a traditional career. I asked my Instagram followers about their take on this topic and this response from Allie, a copywriter and strategy plus mindset coach says it all. She says, I'm a millennial and I think we and Gen Z have the luxury of not being boxed into a boring nine to five. I started working for myself almost five years ago and there's no way I would want to go back to a traditional job. I think the younger generations have more control of their destiny since we can basically make a job out of any interest or hobby. Who we work for, how we work, what we do for work, and how it can all be brought together to create a unique career for each individual are all major changes affecting how boomers and Gen Z show up and interact at the office. But the biggest difference I see is in identity. I touched on this a bit when I spoke on loyalty before, but in general, boomers see work as a much larger part of their identity than younger generations. It's a source of pride, of purpose, of self-respect. Gen Z takes a different approach with more options available to them than generations past, as well as some rightful pessimism and lack of trust for organizations. They see work as just one part of their life. Career is something they get to create based on who they are, what their strengths are, and the lifestyle they desire to live. They're more interested in creating their own destiny than climbing a ladder or following a path that was already set out for them. That's because they know that unlike in times past, hard work and loyalty do not equate to safety in one's role. Thus, work has become more transactional and they are less willing to put in the extra hours, time, and effort to go above and beyond. One could even go as far as to say that from the perspective of Gen Z, the sacrifice, the commitment, the dedication of boomers to one organization, to their role, even at the expense of their personal lives, can in this day and age seem absurd, outdated, and even one-sided. No matter your age or opinion, we can all agree that every generation thinks that those after them are lazy and entitled, but I think we can all learn from each other's perspective. Gen Z could stand to appreciate the mastery and the confidence that comes from good old-fashioned dedication and hard work. There's so much wisdom to be gained from older generations that can absolutely be applied to today's tech-heavy world. Now, boomers, they could stand to relax a little, to zoom out and see that work is just one part of their life, one one part of their identity, and that it can be both fulfilling in its own right, but also be a means to a fulfilling life outside of work. Younger folks might not know it all, but they definitely have a pulse on today's technology and attitudes of consumers. So what do you think? What would you add? Tell me in the comments. Thanks so much for watching until the end. Be sure to like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.